Errol Flynn tragically died after revealing himself to be involved in his son's death. Errol Flynn was born on June 20, 1909, in Hobart, Tasmania, Australia. His early life was shaped by a unique blend of privilege and instability. Flynn's father, Theodore Thompson Flynn, was a renowned marine biologist and zoologist who held a prestigious position as a professor at the University of Tasmania. His mother, Lily Mary Young, came from a middle-class background, and while intelligent and well-read, she struggled with the constraints of marriage and motherhood, eventually contributing to a tense and unhappy family dynamic. Flynn grew up in a household that was intellectually stimulating but emotionally strained. The marriage between his parents deteriorated over time, and they eventually separated during Flynn's formative years. This turbulent family environment left a lasting impact on Flynn, influencing his later struggles with authority and his tendency to rebel against conventional expectations. Growing up in Hobart, Flynn attended the prestigious Hutchins School, known for its academic rigor and emphasis on discipline. However, Flynn was anything but the model student. From a young age, he exhibited a defiant and adventurous spirit, one that clashed with the formal atmosphere of the school. He was often in trouble for his rebellious behavior, including fights with classmates and disregard for school rules. His disdain for authority and his refusal to conform to the school's expectations eventually led to his expulsion. At just 14 years old, Flynn dropped out of school, cutting short any traditional academic path. Though he left Hutchins without formal qualifications, Flynn possessed a natural charisma and a thirst for excitement that would later define his life and career. After leaving school, Flynn found solace and inspiration in the rugged wilderness of Tasmania. Tasmania, with its untamed beauty, offered a playground for his adventurous nature. Flynn became an expert swimmer and diver, skills that would later serve him well in his swashbuckling film roles. He also developed a passion for sailing, learning how to navigate the sometimes treacherous waters surrounding the island. His time exploring Tasmania's wild landscapes gave Flynn a deep connection to nature and an appreciation for physical challenges, both of which shaped his persona as an action star. His love for adventure was insatiable, and he craved experiences that would take him far beyond the confines of Hobart. He later reflected on his desire to break free from his small town life, saying, I wanted to escape from the humdrum, the monotony, the limitations of a small town life in Tasmania. In 1927, at the age of 18, Flynn's wanderlust drove him to leave Tasmania behind and venture into the wider world. His first stop was Papua New Guinea, a land of vast opportunities and untamed wilderness. There, he worked as a tobacco planter and tried his hand at gold prospecting, an experience that was both challenging and dangerous. Papua New Guinea, still largely unexplored and wild at the time, was a place where Flynn could immerse himself in the kind of rugged adventure he craved. His time in the country exposed him to the rough-and-tumble lifestyle of pioneers and fortune-seekers, and Flynn developed a reputation for his daring and often reckless behavior. He got involved in bar fights, faced near-death experiences, and even dabbled in small-time trading. These adventures fed his growing appetite for excitement, but they also showcased his restless spirit and inability to settle into a conventional life. When Flynn wasn't in Papua New Guinea, he spent time in Sydney, Australia, where he tried to break into the entertainment industry. He worked a series of odd jobs, including as a lifeguard and a shiffend, to support himself while pursuing his dreams. Flynn's good looks and natural charm helped him make connections in Sydney's social circles but his efforts to establish himself as an actor were initially met with little success. Undeterred by early setbacks, Flynn continued to chase adventure both on and off the screen. His time in Sydney was marked by constant hustle and a yearning for fame and recognition. By 1933, at the age of 24, Flynn realized that if he wanted to make a serious go at acting, he needed to expand his horizons beyond Australia. He moved to England, hoping to find work in the burgeoning British film industry. However, the transition to life in England was not easy. Flynn struggled financially, living in cheap accommodations and taking on whatever work he could find, from stagehand jobs to performing in small repertory theatre productions. He honed his craft in these modest productions, gaining valuable experience that would serve him later in Hollywood. Despite his hardships, Flynn was persistent 
and his natural talent eventually caught the attention of Warner Brothers, a major film studio that was scouting for new talent. Flynn's big break came in 1935 when he was cast in the British film Murder at Monte Carlo. While the film itself was not a major success, it marked Flynn's debut on the big screen and gave him a taste of the acting world he had long desired to be part of. Soon after, his career took a dramatic turn for the better when he was cast as the lead in Captain Blood, a swashbuckling adventure film that would define the rest of his career. Released in 1935, Captain Blood was a massive hit and introduced Flynn to American audiences as the quintessential action hero. His portrayal of the dashing pirate cemented his reputation as a Hollywood star, and the film's success propelled him into a series of similarly adventurous roles. In the years that followed, Errol Flynn became one of the most popular and successful actors in Hollywood, starring in a string of hit films that cemented his legacy as one of the era's most iconic stars. His rise to fame was marked by a unique combination of qualities that set him apart from many of his peers. With his strikingly handsome appearance, complete with a chiseled jawline, piercing eyes, and a debonair demeanor, Flynn captivated audiences around the world. His magnetic charm, both on and off the screen, contributed to his reputation as a quintessential leading man. Flynn's screen presence radiated charisma, making him a natural fit for roles that required equal parts swashbuckling heroism and sophisticated allure. Additionally, he was renowned for his skill with a sword, which became a hallmark of his performances, particularly in adventure films. Flynn's athleticism and grace in action scenes were unmatched, and his ability to make complex swordplay look effortless contributed significantly to his success. Flynn's most iconic performances came in the adventure films The Adventures of Robin Hood, 1938, and The Seahawk, 1940, both of which are remembered as quintessential examples of Hollywood's golden age. In The Adventures of Robin Hood, Flynn portrayed the legendary outlaw with such vigor and panache that his interpretation remains definitive to this day. His Robin Hood was more than just a daring hero, he was a figure of wit and heart, a swashbuckler who could laugh in the face of danger while remaining deeply committed to his cause of fighting tyranny. Flynn's ability to bring humor to the role, alongside his dynamic action sequences, gave the character a multi-dimensionality that audiences adored. The film's technicolor brilliance, grand set designs, and masterful direction helped it become one of the biggest box office hits of its time, solidifying Flynn's status as Hollywood's leading action star. Even decades later, The Adventures of Robin Hood remains a cultural touchstone, often cited as one of the greatest adventure films ever made. In The Seahawk, Flynn once again demonstrated his extraordinary talent for portraying larger-than-life heroes. Set against the backdrop of the Spanish Armada and the reign of Queen Elizabeth I, the film showcased Flynn in the role of Geoffrey Thorpe, a privateer loyal to the English crown. The Seahawk was a masterclass in the swashbuckling genre, with Flynn delivering a performance filled with action, intensity, and charm. His portrayal of Thorpe blended patriotism with personal courage, making him an idealized figure of heroism during a time when audiences craved escapist entertainment especially as World War II loomed. Flynn's swordsmanship and athletic prowess were again on full display, with carefully choreographed action scenes that thrilled viewers. The film was not only a critical success but also a commercial triumph, further cementing Flynn's reputation as the king of swashbuckling cinema. To this day, The Seahawk is regarded as one of the greatest swashbuckling films ever made, a testament to Flynn's enduring appeal in the genre. Flynn's success in Hollywood throughout the 1940s was remarkable, as he continued to star in a variety of films that showcased his versatility as an actor. While he was best known for his adventure roles, he also appeared in war films, dramas, and even comedies. Despite the evolving trends in cinema, Flynn maintained his popularity due to his star power and ability to connect with audiences. His performances exuded confidence and charm, making him a beloved figure on the big screen. As Hollywood's golden boy, Flynn's name became synonymous with high adventure films, and his presence alone could draw large crowds to theaters. Even as new stars emerged, Flynn's legacy remained strong throughout the decade, proving that his appeal was not fleeting but rather deeply ingrained in the public's imagination. Outside of his film career, Errol Flynn was as famous for his tumultuous personal life as he was for his acting. 
Known for his rakish persona off-screen, Flynn lived a life filled with romantic entanglements, scandal, and controversy. He was married three times, but none of his marriages were without their difficulties, reflecting the chaotic nature of his personal relationships. Flynn's first marriage was to French actress Lily Damida in 1935, a union that was marked by intense passion but also frequent conflict. Damida was a glamorous and temperamental figure in her own right, and their marriage was fraught with arguments and jealousy. The couple had one son, Sean Flynn, but their relationship eventually broke down, leading to a bitter divorce in 1942. The split was acrimonious, with legal battles over money and custody further complicating their already strained relationship. Flynn's second marriage to actress Nora Eddington in 1943 was similarly troubled. Eddington was much younger than Flynn, and their relationship was often overshadowed by Flynn's erratic behavior and continued infidelity. They had two daughters together, Deirdre and Rory Flynn, but the pressures of Flynn's lifestyle, along with his excessive drinking and womanizing, took a toll on the marriage. By 1948, their union ended in divorce, with Eddington later reflecting on the difficulties of being married to someone as unpredictable and self-destructive as Flynn. However, Flynn's most scandalous and infamous relationship was with Beverly Odland, a teenager who was just 17 years old when they began dating. Flynn, in his mid-40s at the time, carried on a secret affair with Odland, which would later become one of Hollywood's most notorious scandals. The relationship became public in 1959 when Flynn suffered a fatal heart attack while in the company of Odland, who had recently turned 18. The two had been staying in Vancouver, Canada, where Flynn was planning a film project. Flynn's death, compounded by the revelation of his relationship with a much younger woman, sent shockwaves through the media. While Odland remained loyal to Flynn until his death, their relationship was widely criticized, and it remains a controversial chapter in Flynn's personal life. Flynn's reputation as a ladies' man, combined with his often self-destructive tendencies, created a lasting image of a man whose personal life was as tumultuous and dramatic as the roles he played on screen. Errol Flynn's private life was as controversial as it was captivating. Known for his swashbuckling roles in Hollywood, Flynn also lived a life filled with excess and scandal. His daughter, Grace Flynn, later confirmed the long-circulating rumors about her father's tumultuous private life. Behind the charm and rugged handsomeness that made him a film icon, Errol Flynn struggled with deep-seated issues, including addiction, legal troubles, and a lifestyle that often spiraled out of control. One of the most pervasive aspects of Errol Flynn's personal challenges was his battle with addiction. He was notorious for his excessive drinking, which often led to erratic behavior both on and off the set. His love for alcohol was well known in Hollywood, where his hard drinking habits became part of his infamous reputation. Flynn also reportedly dabbled in drug use, further complicating his already chaotic lifestyle. The pressures of fame, combined with his volatile personality, resulted in numerous public outbursts and moments of bad behavior that were frequently covered by the press. His off-screen persona as a hellraiser overshadowed his on-screen charisma, and his unpredictable conduct alienated many in the industry. Flynn's addiction problems worsened over the years, affecting his ability to work consistently and perform at the level that had once made him a superstar. As his drinking grew more excessive, it began to take a toll on his health and his appearance, leading to erratic performances. Despite this, he continued to secure roles, but his personal life was often a mess, marked by destructive relationships and tumultuous affairs. Perhaps the most damaging event in Flynn's personal life was the 1943 trial in which he was accused of statutory rape by two underage girls. The trial, which was covered relentlessly by the media, became one of the most scandalous legal battles in Hollywood history. Flynn's glamorous and bad boy image made the accusations all the more shocking to the public. The proceedings revealed salacious details about Flynn's private life, portraying him as a man who engaged in risky and questionable behavior. The trial took a significant toll on Flynn, not just emotionally but also in terms of his public image. Though he was acquitted of the charges, the damage to his reputation was profound. Flynn's defense argued that the accusations were exaggerated or opportunistic, and his acquittal was a relief to his fans and colleagues. 
However, the trial cast a long shadow over his career. Even though Flynn was legally cleared, the public perception of him as a womanizer and a man of questionable morals lingered. This incident marked a turning point in his life, after which he was never able to fully regain the status he once held as one of Hollywood's most beloved leading men. In the final years of his life, Flynn's health began to deteriorate rapidly due to his years of substance abuse. The heavy drinking and drug use that had once been part of his persona as a Hollywood bad boy had now taken a severe toll on his physical well-being. He began to suffer from a variety of ailments, including liver damage, heart problems, and chronic pain. Despite these challenges, Flynn continued to work in Hollywood, although his once vibrant screen presence was now a shadow of what it had been. Flynn's personal life during this period was fraught with financial and legal troubles. He had squandered much of his fortune on his extravagant lifestyle, and by the time of his death, he was facing significant debt. His relationships also remained turbulent, and although he tried to maintain a career, the combination of his failing health and personal issues made it increasingly difficult for him to do so. On October 14, 1959, at the age of 50, Errol Flynn died in Vancouver, Canada, from a heart attack. His death came as a shock to many, as he had been a larger-than-life figure whose fame had once seemed impervious to decline. The entertainment industry mourned the loss of Flynn, and his passing marked the end of an era in Hollywood. Flynn's friends and colleagues remembered him as a charismatic and gifted actor whose talents had left an indelible mark on the film industry, even if his personal life had been fraught with turmoil. Grace Flynn, Flynn's daughter with his third wife, Patrice Wymore, was just 11 years old when her father died. Over the years, Grace has become an actress in her own right, following in her father's footsteps into the entertainment industry. In addition to her own career in film and television, Grace has also become a key figure in preserving her father's legacy. She has spoken candidly about the challenges her father faced in his personal life, particularly his struggles with addiction and his controversial legal issues. Grace has made it her mission to advocate for her father's legacy, acknowledging both the brilliance of his career and the complexity of his personal struggles. In recent years, Grace has taken an active role in promoting her father's legacy. She has participated in the creation of numerous biographies and documentaries that aim to present a more balanced view of Errol Flynn, recognizing both his professional accomplishments and the darker aspects of his private life. Grace has also worked to restore Flynn's estate in Jamaica, which has become a popular tourist destination for fans of the actor. Her efforts have helped to ensure that Flynn's films and memorabilia continue to be appreciated by new generations of movie lovers while also acknowledging the lessons to be learned from his tumultuous life. Flynn also had a son, Sean Flynn, from his previous marriage to actress Lily Damita. Sean Flynn's life was as dramatic as his father's, though it took a different path. Sean initially tried to follow in his father's footsteps by pursuing a career in acting, but he found himself disillusioned by Hollywood. Despite the glamour associated with the Flynn name, Sean felt burdened by the constant comparisons to his father. He later expressed this frustration in letters to his mother, Lily Damita, confessing that he preferred to load cement at a construction site rather than try to compete with Errol's larger-than-life image. In those letters, it was discovered that he and Errol had a complicated relationship. Sean eventually found his own calling as a photojournalist, specifically focusing on conflict zones. He became a renowned war photojournalist, covering the Vietnam War, which brought him both respect and admiration. However, his career as a photojournalist led to a tragic end. In 1970, while working in Cambodia during the Vietnam War, Sean Flynn went missing. He was captured by communist forces, and despite numerous efforts to locate him, Sean was never found. In 1984, he was declared legally dead, though the exact circumstances of his disappearance remain a mystery. The tragic story of Sean Flynn's disappearance only added another layer of complexity to the Flynn family legacy. Like his father, Sean's life was filled with adventure, risk, and an undeniable allure. His decision to distance himself from Hollywood was a deliberate effort to forge his own identity, free from the shadow of Errol Flynn. Yet, like his father, Sean's life ended in tragedy, leaving behind a legacy that has continued to intrigue the public.